Hey guys, so welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Today I want to show you how you can render a click track in Studio One. It's incredibly easy and convenient and can be very useful, for example, when playing live or when recording in a studio environment. Okay, so here I'm in Studio One, I'm in a brand new song and I have an audio file right here, which is one of the tracks that I'm going to perform with my band live this weekend. It's very exciting, of course. And our guitarist who's playing with us has actually requested a click track for this. Now, I don't have a click track, but fortunately, it's really easy to render that inside of Studio One. Let me show you how that's done. So first of all, I'm going to grab this audio file from Studio One's browser and all I need to do is just drag that onto the timeline like so. Now, if we check this out, you will notice immediately that the downbeat is not really aligned on the grid and the BPM are most likely also wrong. Um, so yeah, if I play this, it just doesn't add up. Right, so this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to get a click track from that, we first have to make sure that the BPM of the song and the file are actually aligned. But before we do that, we need to make sure that when you open up the track inspector here at Studio One, that you don't have tempo mode set to time stretch. Don't set it to time stretch. Um, it's possible that this happens automatically to double check that, open up the song setup and make sure that on the general you don't have stretch audio files to tempo active. This is important because otherwise every file that you're importing into Studio One is going to be time stretched to the specified song tempo of your project automatically. This is great for DJs and EDM producers, but in this case not really desired. So make sure that this song setting is off or at least the audio track that you're importing an audio file on is not set to time stretch. With that taken care of, we first of all have to detect the original BPM of the file. And to do that, we just hit Command and M on a Mac or Control and M on Windows to open Melodyne. You can also do it with a right click, but this is the fastest method. And what's great about Melodyne is that it immediately analyzes the actual tempo of your file with stunning precision. So in this case, it's probably very easy because it has a fixed BPM, but this even works with a free tempo performance where the BPM is shifting, like the tempo is shifting over time. You can use Melodyne for detection of that also and also create a click track for that. So even if you have like a free tempo band performance, you can still generate a click track. And if you want to find out how to generate such a tempo map to make that work, I have a tutorial that covers that right here check it out. So after we hit Command and M on Melodyne, we can already see that here in this little corner, it says 120, which is the BPM I've set in my project. If I would set 140, you would say 140, as you can see. And behind that in brackets here, 122, it says the actual file tempo. So 122 is what we want, right? Because we try to align the project BPM to the audio file BPM in this first step in order to render a click track. So I just enter 122 here as my project tempo. And after I've done that, I'm already good to go and I can remove Melodyne again. To do that, I just hold Option, Command and M on a Mac or Control, Alt and M on Windows. Just like that, Melodyne is removed again. This is indicated by this effects icon disappearing in the bottom corner of the event. And now I have my audio track set to 122 and my project set to 122. Great, but the click is still not aligning. Right, we can hear the tempo is sort of the same, but the start point is different. And this is where an amazing feature that was introduced in Studio One 6 comes in, the sync points. So we right click this audio event and we tick the sync point and now we get this little diamond here in the bottom left corner. And that we can just drag to any of the downbeats in the song. It doesn't even have to be the first one. It can be any downbeat really. And what's great is you can see this snaps to transients, right? So just snap that to any of the downbeats. And then what you do is you just drag and drop the whole audio file onto the grid. Make sure that grid snap is active. And you can see how the sync point is snapping to the grid like a magnet, right? And this is exactly what we want to see. And that's all that we need to do. We're already done. And the click is perfectly aligned with the audio file. Check it out. Wonderful. The last thing we have to do is just set a loop range for the start and end point of our click track that we're about to render. 
So from here, maybe I wanna have like a four beat count in like this. That's great. I think our guitarist will really appreciate that. And the final step is click here on this wrench icon next to the metronome icon. And here in the metronome setup, I can now just select the sound that I want for this click track. It can be either one of the preset sounds for the metronome, but it could also be a sample that you can import yourself. You can actually customize your click track this way, which is amazing. And then you just hit render and then you specify that you want to render the loop range. You could have also set the marker start and end uh, song points, but I like to do it with the loop range. You hit OK and bam, that's your click track right here. It sounds very exciting, of course, but it's in perfect alignment. And now you can just go ahead, grab these two files and export them into any folder of your live show, right? Or wherever you're currently working. Just drag and drop that and you're good to go. So hopefully this is gonna help you out and hopefully you learned something today, how easy it is to render a click track at Studio One. And thank you for watching.